हिच एंटी नेशनल कौन है देश द्रोही यहाँ पर इस देश में कोई देश द्रोही नहीं है हम जब भी चुप रहेंगे सत्य से भागते हुए रहेंगे इस फिल्म के जरिए जो बात बताई है ये हर उस पत्रकार के दिल की बात है ये वो दुविधा है जो आज एक पत्रकार गुजर रहा है इस देश में से He's fighting a battle for thousands of people, thousands of people who might not even realize that the battle he's yeah, he's fighting it for us. It, it gives a lot of hope to see that we have a voice like him for us. The director came up and uh, said in the end is that usually, you know, after such a documentary movie you discuss uh he said there's no point of discussing because i think the audience here at least those who are seeing it in india don't need any context they exactly know what is going on there is nothing to discuss i had forgotten a lot of things and while going through the movie it was painful i could feel tears in my eyes hum log ko incidents mein pata the ki kya kya kab kab hua hai par isme movie mein dekhkar wo feel ho raha tha to be able to see the man behind the journalist and and to understand that his journalism is not different uh, from his values not his journalism defines his values his values define his journalism agar main dar ki ki baat karungi to shayad main bhi nationalist nahi rahu <laughs> lekin journalism ki halat to ab hum dekh hi rahe hain uske baad koi bahut achhi sthiti to hui nahi hai i think it's a documentation जो बहुत ज़रूरी है आ, बाकी आगे आने वाले लोगों के लिए और जिन लोगों ने नहीं देखा है कि एक्चुअल न्यूज़ रूम में क्या होता है क्या चैलेंजेस होते हैं कितनी चुनौतियां और कितनी मुश्किलात आते हैं Welcome to News Laundry Interviews. Today we have with us Vinay Shukla. He is a filmmaker, producer, and he's directed a very acclaimed film. While we watched, we've all heard about the movie. I'm sure the movie is centered on Ravish Kumar, the journalist, and centered on the NDTV newsroom. But it's about a lot of things. Vinay, thank you for being with us. Why did you choose a newsroom? As your uh, movie this time, because last time you made an insignificant man, which was about an upstart political party back then journalism is one of the biggest stories of our times journalists need to be the protagonist of that story hmm. so with ravish i found an interesting protagonist i remember watching one of ravish's broadcast and unlike most of the news anchors who spend a lot of time praising their uh, audiences ravish was actually scolding his audiences berating them almost yeah yeah almost <laughs> and uh, almost saying things like that you know i don't know why you're still watching tv mm. and even if nobody's watching my 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 uh, uh, my show i'm still going to say what i what i want to say mm. so it seemed like here was a protagonist who was not just questioning the government but also questioning his audiences your primal attraction to it was ravish as a character or the world of tv news and what was happening to it with ravish i knew that i had a good character you're always searching or i am at least always searching for characters who can actually tell the story that i want to tell when you were thinking about ravish or tv news was the jnu episode something that hit you as you know important or pivotal because it kind of you know the movie kind of starts from there the whole I mean, anti national thing specifically with regards to the jnu incident of course there was you know the kind of uh, media trial mm. uh, an elongated media trial that has happened around uh, around that incident is of course uh, is another film by itself up till that moment uh, uh, i believe people could say anything that they wanted to within the confines of the of their universities very often and more so uh, within gnu with the liberty of uh, knowing you won't be slapped with sedition and figuring <laughs> figuring your voice out in yeah, the world yeah yeah you know uh, one of one of my favorite moments was uh, when this entire jnu thing was happening i think and uh, 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 somebody went to jackie shroff and asked him uh, uh, you know all of this is happening what is it that you have to say jackie jackie aapko kya lagta hai <laughs> and jackie shroff in a, a, a in a moment of classic wisdom said uh, the movie is basically following ravish through camera and like you said there's no view so mm. it's really him driving the story mm. so did you shoot through the year or did you shoot specific months and was it 24/7 i shot i shot every day every shot, day for those i shot every day so was he like in a big boss reality tv kind oh, of oh you could sense? say that you could say that but <laughs> which like which much better cameras and like uh, uh, with and far more intrusive human beings wake up in the morning you know you do your breakfast thing blah 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 get ready for the shoot reach ravish's house by about 12 
uh, he would come down around 12, 15, 12, 30. So you would get to his house, mm. mic his car up, get your cameras ready. Ravish would step out of the lift. You follow him from the lift, mm. gets to office. And you did this every day for every three years? Two years, yeah. Two years, so every then, day. Yeah, wow. Very often when you're starting a documentary or you're shooting documentaries with people, you have to explain to people what a documentary is. Mm. Yeah, na? Uh, within the NDTV newsroom, you don't have to explain to anybody. My first job is that you have to tell the story. You don't have to tell the story. You don't have to stage things. This film is with Ravish. Aap, Ravish ka panch minute, you can't get him to listen to you. Forget getting him to stage something. <laughs> right? And the same with the, within the NDTV newsroom. I can't go to like, you know, like yeah, yeah, these yeah. big guns and go like, can you walk again from left to right because my camera... Nobody cares. People want to hear a true story. But do whether they want to hear the 100% absolutely true story told in chronological you know, fashion, <laughs> then they should watch CCTV footage. Cake is a metaphor in the movie almost. Mm. I think every 10 minutes Ravish is eating a cake and there's a cake cutting ceremony. <laughs> this film is like the Titanic but it's not about Jack and Rose. It's about the people who decided to play their violence as the ship sank. <laughs> I knew with 100% clarity that was going to be in the film. On the first day I didn't know how many cakes are going to be cut. In the beginning when you're trying to use it on the edits, uh, when it's not working, people would, you know, very often tell me that this is a bakery film or a newsroom film. <laughs> He's of course a cult figure. People love him. Those who love him, love him to death. But then there are the guys that really dislike him, mm. hate him. He's getting calls. People are seeing like a one and a half minute scene in the film. Yeah. We saw it play out for over two hours. Yeah. Right? So over a period of two hours, you really begin to wonder that this guy is getting so many sort of troll calls. Yeah. He's taking all calls. He's picking up all the calls. Yeah, he's picking up all calls. He's trying to speak to these people. These people are absolutely going after him. Yeah. You know, his family is witnessing them. Death threats, go to Pakistan, we'll you know, kill you. All of very, very intensely. The kind of disinformation campaign that has happened actively against news and new people in the news business has completely desensitized people to the crisis of the news. You can have a thousand differences with Ravish or with NDTV, as people often do, right? Mm. Every, every tweet there is about the film or there is this thing, people will be like, but yeah, Patrakar! Or NDTV, what is it that we are doing? What systems are we building for journalists, for young journalists who are far better than Ravish to come forward and thrive? Mm. What is the system that you have for more women to come forward and thrive in this career? For people from, you know, marginalized communities to come forward and thrive in this career? Go and speak to younger people who are coming out of colleges and ask them what is it that they feel about joining journalism as a profession today. I could count the number of newsrooms on my fingers who sensitize and train their journalists in pandemic reporting. Mm. So newsrooms are not training their journalists in complexities. We have not kept journalists in terms of arming them better with better information, with better frameworks. People are making contracts for 2 months, 3 months, there is no representation within their organizations. No safety nets. No safety nets within, out, within and outside. No safety nets within and outside. And then we say that we are not safeguarding our journalists, but we expect them to be superheroes. Until you don't keep their anxieties, how can you make a better future? And if you don't want a better future, then who is here? Ultimately, every, like, people keep saying people come to the news for entertainment. I don't think so. Hmm. You know, people come to the news. Roy's were really at the center of this figure of elite media that had to be kind of brought down. Did you guys think of ever kind of reaching out to them, having them also in the movie or you were clear from the beginning that this is a Ravish story? Yeah, the thing is I knew that this was a Ravish story. Hmm. And the Roy story, for example, starts in like the mid 80s, yeah, late yeah. the late 90s, the, the late 80s or, you know, the globalization era and, you know, the 2000s. So that story is much more exhaustive hmm. uh, with far many more characters. Uh, and somebody else needs to ju do justice to that by making a film or a series or a book, whatever, around them hmm. and the larger NDTV journey. Even the other characters, for example, you mentioned, some of the most stellar journalists were working within that newsroom yeah. or have worked within that newsroom. I didn't have access to them. How did your opinion of journalism or newsrooms change? Did you, did you start at a point and did, did it change after these three years of witnessing everything that you witnessed? Samaj ke jitne bhi pain points hote hain, Unka aapko ekdam matlab front seat view milta hai and the mm. train is just passing by kya aaj ye ho gaya, aaj ye ho gaya, aaj ye ho gaya. Uh, to be able to maintain your sensitivity within this job uh, and do it with a lot of heart that you know people still do, I have a lot of respect for it. 
uh, I could, I can complete, and you know, people who are in public sector, public life, uh, for example, even politicians, even the people that you disagree with, go spend a day in their office. Hmm. You will begin to understand or get a glimpse into uh, why they behave the way they do at your, in your eight o'clock uh, 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 shouting match on television. Were you a little worried while making the movie that could this depress the audience in a way on what's happening around them, news, and especially young people, like you said, who want to get into the business. Because, <laughs> you know, there's always that dilemma. You want to be honest about what's happening to journalism in India. It's not an exact math. I don't know if I'll keep this, so people will feel like this. I was really angry while I was making this film. I was very, I'll be very honest with you. And the film is, you know, for all its practical purpose, it's a 90-minute trauma capsule. Like, I was very resolutely, I knew that I'm going to make a film that's going to be very, very angry. For 90 minutes, people should feel the same trauma and anger and anxiety that I do. After that, people can chill. Hmm. There's no need to say anything. I think what I think is the right thing, what I think is the right thing, is representative of how I feel and how I see things, is, what, is, is the film that I have made. Hmm. I am responsible towards that. People are very angry, they don't have any attention to me. Don't see them. जिनको बहुत ज़्यादा उदासी हो रही है देख के और जो बोलते हैं ये तो नहीं होना चाहिए ना देखें बहुत कुछ है देखने के लिए मोद लाइक रवीश हेटर्स कम अप टू यू एंड से कि आपने तो बायस है आपने हीरो बना दिया उसको तो गलत है आपने क्यों दिखाया कि उन्हें चौदह साल पहले क्या बोला था या नहीं वो नहीं होता है मैं वो जो रवीश के जो हेटर्स भी होते हैं वो उनको रवीश से प्रॉब्लम है है ना उनको मुझे ऐसा कि किसी ने आगे मुझे फिल्म पे अब तक तो नहीं बोला है कि फिल्म में आपने ये नहीं दिखा फिल्म में वो नहीं दिखा उनको रवीश के परसोना से होता है कि रवीश ऐसे हो गए वैसे हो गए ये हो गया वो हो गया विच इज समथिंग विद विच इज यूजिंग द द फिल्म आल्सो व्हिच आई थिंक इट्स अ वेरी वेरी फनी सीन आई वोंट गिव दैट आउट बट इट्स बीन वे मोर शी सेड शी वोंट रिवील एनीथिंग एवरी गाइस जस्ट वाच द but this is behind the paywall. So only, <laughs> only News Laundry subscribers will get to know all the juicy details. The rest will just have to do the promo. Free me itna ich milega. To watch the full unedited interview, you have to subscribe to News Laundry and pay to keep news free. Because we don't run an advertising. All our money comes from subscribers like you. And that is how public service journalism is paid for. All the studio lights, the cameras, all that you see on our website, it all comes from subscribers. So do subscribe. Click on the subscription link, watch all the interviews unedited and pay for public interest journalism.